Okay, let's talk about how to reduce a fraction. And here I have a fraction, 16 over 32. And I would say a good majority of you out there watching this, if you thought about it for uh, you know a minute or maybe not even that long, some of you probably can already tell me what the answer is right away. But eventually, even those of you who are like, mm, I'm not quite sure. If you think about it for you know, maybe 30, 40 seconds, it would come to mind and be like, oh, okay, I know how to reduce this fraction. But for those of you who are still not quite sure what I'm talking about, Let's take a look at this fraction, uh, 5 over 10. So is there a easier way I can write this fraction? Okay, so here I have 5 over 10. So now some of you might be saying, well, is that the same thing as 1 half? And you would be correct. Okay, so this fraction is equivalent to this fraction, but this 1 half is a simpler form of this number. Okay, so fractions just represent a value in mathematics. This is one way to represent it, but this is even a simpler way. So what we want to do is reduce fractions that are not as simple as they can be into their simplest form. And the procedure of doing that, or kind of the action, is called reducing or simplifying a fraction. So think about it, like 5 over 10, here's another fraction that's uh, equal to 1 half. Uh, 500 over 1,000. I mean, do you really want to be writing this? That's a lot of zeros. When I'm like, eh, yeah, I don't know about you, but if I can make my life as easy as possible, I'm not going to write that thing all day. I'm going to write this, okay? Because 500 over 1,000 is equivalent to one half. So you want to be reducing your fractions. Matter of fact, it's kind of not an even optional uh, in mathematics, okay? You're kind of expected to simplify, fully simplify, and fully reduce fractions, not only in arithmetic, but in algebra as well. But we're going to look at some examples on how to reduce reduce fractions. Now, um, the way you can approach this problem, for example, there is one right answer. Okay, so when we reduce this, we'll get to one right answer. But the kind of the path you can uh, take could be a little bit different. Some people could kind of you know chip away at this problem using a couple different steps or uh, breaking up these numbers in different ways. But the bottom line is you still need to get to the correct answer. So we'll talk about some practical uh, techniques that you need to know or practical things that you need to know about reducing fractions. Okay. All right. So uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I specialize in middle school, obviously high school, and uh, college level mathematics. So the, my courses would include or start from pre-algebra, kind of go up to pre-calculus with everything in between. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're taking any exam with math, so like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, uh, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam. You know, there's a, <laughs> so many people have to take exams of all areas of life. So it's not just students. You might be going for a certification or you might be trying to get into a particular program. So anyways, um, if you're taking any exam with math on it, I have tons of test prep courses that help can help you out. If you homeschool, I have a fantastic homeschool math curriculum that you might be interested in. And if you need math notes, you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave a link, uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. But hopefully you don't need my math notes because you should have your own. And uh, after decades of teaching mathematics, this is one of the most critical things that you can do for your math success. Okay, so um, let's get going and we'll take a look at this uh, fraction here, 16 over 32. If you want to... Uh, you know, think about this for another second or two. You can pause the video because I'm going to show you the answer right now. Okay, so let's go down here. We have 16 over 32. Okay, so, um, and this is kind of going to be a general, kind of a somewhat of an informal lesson on reducing or simplifying fractions. So it's more, this is more designed to be a review. Um, so here we have 16, we have, uh, we have 32. Now, what's going on in your mind is you're probably saying, okay, what number goes into this and what number goes into this? And so we start testing numbers. We're like, okay, I know four goes into this and four goes into that, or two goes into this and two goes into this, or eight goes into this and eight goes into this. So you don't know which number, right? So this is like what's mentally going on. But, but again, I could break up 16, okay, in factors, okay? I can do this as one times 16, two times eight, four times four. So let's say you thought of 16 as 4 times 4. 
Okay, and then you're probably saying, yeah, I'm thinking of 16 is 4 times 4 because I know 32 is 4 times 8. So that's good thinking, okay? But what's the what are we really doing here? Well, we're breaking up these uh, the numerator and denominator into uh, their factors. Now, these are not prime factors, okay? But you're just thinking to yourself factors. Now, again, some of you uh, cut a dot and use different numbers, but I just want to show you what's going on here, okay? So we have 4 times 4 is 16, and 32 is 4 times 8. So what you're doing is you're trying to find like factors, things that are separated by multiplication, okay? So I can cross-cancel like factors. In a fraction, I could cross-cancel like factors. So when I do that, in this particular case, I'm left with 4 over 8, okay? So I have 16 over 32. Now that's equal to 4 over 8. That is true. Okay, six, uh, 16 over 32 is equal to 4 over 8. Here's the deal, though. 4 over 8 is not the simplest form. Okay, I can reduce this even further. So some of you might be like, oh, okay, that's 4 times 1 is 4, and then 8 is 4 times 2. And now I could cross-cancel these 4. Oops, uh, didn't want to do that. Hold on here. Uh, I want to cross-cancel these 4s right there, okay? So now I'm finally left with 1 half. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, uh, and this is, by the way, the simplest form. This is what I'm talking about in terms of um, different uh, approaches to factoring. But let's take another, another uh, look at this same problem, 16 over 32. Some of you might have said, oh, 16 is 8 times 2, and 32 is 8 times 4, okay, might have done that, all right, and so you, this is nice because guess what, you get to cross cancel bigger factors, so 8 go away and I'm left with 2 over 4, and you're like, oh, okay, 2 fourths is 1 half, or 2 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2, so I cross cancel that, and I'm left with 1 half, okay, so that's even uh, another approach that you could have taken, so again, not a uh, you know, there's different paths to get to the right answer. And some of you could have just said, oh, 16 is 1 times 16, and uh, 32 is uh, 2 times 16. I could cross-cancel these 16s, and that's 1 half. There you go. Look at me. I'm so, you know, I'm up to speed on my multiplication and my factors and whatnot. So this is the easiest way uh, to do this. And this would be, you know, kind of like the longer path. So in, pr in a practical sense, when it comes to arithmetic, don't feel bad about taking little, you know, whittling your problem down uh, to reduce, okay? Now, what you can do, all right, technically, which would be like the best way of doing this, uh, or the most technically correct way, is I would take this 16 and I would break it up into its prime factors. So let's just look at that here. So 16 is 4 times 4, and 4 times 4 is 2 times 2, and this, uh, and this this 4 is 2 times 2, and 4, this 4 here is 2 times 2. So 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, these are all prime numbers, and those are factors of 16. Now 32 happens to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 16 times another 2 is 32, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I can break up both of these numbers into their prime factors, and then cross cancel like factors. So I got four twos up here, four twos down there, boom, 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 boom. And there's always a one over there. So I got one half. So that is kind of the more technical approach. Yeah, okay, I want to break up each of my values into their prime factors. But, you know, in a practical sense, you might be just being, hey, I'm just going to start whittling this down into simpler fractions till I can kind of finally get this right answer. So if you started with fours, or twos doesn't make a difference again as long as you end up with the final answer in that uh, in this case it's one half all right so that is uh, what reducing is about okay uh, you want to be looking for like factors between the numerator and denominator and start cross canceling them the bigger the factor the easier or the less steps you have to take but don't feel bad okay if you use a smaller factor just keep keep going until you can't go any further so let's take a look at another example and here's one right here so 20 over 45 so now you might be saying to yourself with well, 20 let's just do this over here 20 over 45 let's say I said oh 20 is uh, 2 times 10 
Okay. You could write that mentally, but if I'm looking at 45, um, 45, I can't, you know, it's, there's no factors of 10 or 2 for 45. You can't be like 2 times some number is 45. So that's not going to work, right? You, the only factors are coming to mind probably for most of you out there. It's going to be 9 times 5. So I'm like, mm, there's no like factors. So if you just because you don't see any like factors, if you thought of uh, 20 as 2 times 10, you're going to have to go back to the drawing board and think of 20 as something else. Okay, look at other factors. Now, if you get stuck and you're not sure, then just start prime, start looking for all the prime factors. So 20, okay, I can write as 4 times 5, okay, and that's the this 5 is the key because I'm like, oh, 20 is 4 times 5 because I know 45 is 9 times 5. So again, mentally. You know, you kind of have to play around with this and don't feel shy or don't feel bad that you're kind of thinking about it for a second. Or like, okay, this isn't going to work because I can't cross cancel anything here. Now, some of you might have uh, seen right here, this two, this is 10, two times 10 is 20. So that's really, this two times 10 is the same thing as two times two times five, that's 10, right? So that's nine times five, and I could cross cancel. But in this case here, I could just cross cancel right there, and I'm left with four over nine, okay? So again, you know, you don't don't feel the need that you have to t uh, go ahead and completely uh, go through some sort of uh, full prime factorization. Just look for those biggest like factors that come to mind and start whittling these things down. That's probably the, what the majority of you do as well. But remember, whatever fraction you're left with after you've taken a step, you know, and you're not sure if you used all the factors, you got to think about it. Okay. Evaluate it and make sure mm, that you can't go any further. So let's take a look at another example. Okay. So here, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you this. I'm not going to show you the rest of this work here, just in case you want to uh, do this. So we have one, one, uh, 26 over 320. Okay. So uh, the first thing is, I know I could, because uh, this ends with 6, and this ends with 0, each of these is divisible by 2, okay? So 126 is the same thing as 2 times 63, and then 320, okay? Although it's divisible by 2, I just said I have a 0 down here, okay? I can write this as 32 times 10, okay? So at this point, what can you do here, right? Although they're divisible by 2, someone with this 0, this is also divisible by 10. It's super easy to write. 320 uh, as 32 times 10. Now, I'm going to give you a, um, a real big uh, uh, suggestion here. You want to know the divisibility rules, divisibility rules. You don't have to know all of them perfectly, but uh, when a number is divisible by 3, when a number is divisible by 2, okay, when a number is divisible by uh, uh, 10 or 0, these divisibility rules, okay, are, are really, really help you out when looking for factors, okay? So uh, if you want to review the uh, divisibility rules, I have, uh, I'm sure I have a couple videos on this in my uh, pre-algebra uh, list in my YouTube channel, okay? You can go through and just kind of search for that, or you can just look this up, but you, the more divisibility rules you uh, know, the easier factoring is, because you can just, you know, kind of question yourself whether something is divisible by two or three and whatnot, so you can start looking for nice little factors. Okay, so let's go through this. So here I have 2 times 63 over 32 times 10. This is one way to start this problem. Now, I don't see any like factors right now, but I know I can break up 10 further, and I know I can break up 32 further. So at this point, you know, you want to just kind of like, you know, you can go either start breaking these numbers up further and then try to break up 63 further and then start cross-canceling, or we can take a look at 126 over 320 and uh, use a different approach. So 126 is 2 times 63. Uh, let me do it this way. Okay, 2 times 63. And then 320, like I was saying, I could also divide that by 2 because I know I'm dividing this by 2, so I'll have uh, like factors right off the bat. So 320 is the same thing as 2 times 160. All right, so this is good because I could just get rid of these 2s and I'm left with dealing with this. But 63 over 160, I'm not you know, uh, confident at all that this is fully factored. So we're going to have to try to continue to do some work here and see if I can factor uh, this. So 63, okay, so we have 63 over 160. 63 is actually equal to 3 times 21. 
Now, this might not be obvious uh, to you, okay, but the sum of the digits, if 6 plus 3 is 9, if the sum of the div digits is divisible, divisible, excuse me, by uh, 3, then the number is divisible by 3. I'm pretty sure I have that correct. Let's do a problem like 21, okay? So 21, the sum of the digits is what? 2 plus 1, that's 3, okay? So 3 is certainly divisible by 3, okay? So again, uh, the divisibility rules come in super handy, okay? So when you're uh, factoring, especially larger numbers like this. So this 160, I'm just going to just quickly mentally break that up as 16 times 10. Again, you could do this in all kinds of different ways, okay? You can go 80 times 2. Uh, there's different paths to take. But what I'm looking at here, I don't see any like factors. So at this point, this is probably a good time to just to break all this these values up into their prime factors. So this is 3 times 21. So that's 3 times 21 is 7 times 3. I'm just listing all these out. And then 16 is 4 times 4. I can write that as 2 times 2 times 2. But I'm going to write them as 4 times 4 real quick. And then 10 is 2 times 5. And if you look here, okay, there's this all these up here are prime factors. Okay, so unless I can get a 3, 7, and a 3, a 3 or a 7 down here in the denominator, I can't factor any further. There's not going to be any more like factors. Because these 4s are going to be 2 times 2, 2 times 2. So I got a bunch of 2s and 5, 5, so 3, 7, and 3. Well, I can't go any further. But that's not exactly obvious at this stage of the game. So this is the final answer, okay, 63 over 160. But that, again, is not... Um, it's not obvious that this is fully simplified. You're going to have to go through and check. So again, stylistically, you know, the way if you want to break all these up into prime factors just so you can just get all the work done uh, in front, that's fine. Or you want to just kind of experiment around, you know those divisibility rules, break these up in different factors that are easy for you to break up and whittle this problem down, it, that's fine as well. <clears throat> the whole idea is for you to end up with absolute certainty that you fully simplified these fractions. So uh, just, again, I can't emphasize the importance of knowing some basic divisibility rules. There's a lot of different rules, uh, divisibility rules uh, out there for, you know, division of different numbers, but definitely know the ones for 3, 2, you know, 5, you know, 10, those things here, there, okay, will definitely uh, help you out, especially... Um, when you're dealing not just with uh, arithmetic, you know, fractions like this, but, you know, uh, this stuff applies as well in algebra because you can have something like this, 16y squared over y to the fifth power. Okay, I just throw in some variables, and we're going to be basically doing the same thing. Okay, we're going to be uh, simplifying this now rational expression. That's what we call fractions in algebra. But this part of the problem is just using what we just talked about in arithmetic. And then this part of the problem, you got to know something about powers and exponents. But uh, we're just going to uh, leave it at this. Okay, we're just focusing in on numbers for now. Okay, so hopefully this was a good thorough review of reducing fractions. It's certainly something you definitely need to know. And if this helps you out, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider uh, subscribing a bit on YouTube for 10 plus years. Have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to always try to make this stuff clear and understandable. So hopefully you know, uh, you resonate with my teaching style. And if that's the case, uh, stick around because I'm going to be doing math videos uh, for as long as I possibly can. I'll never run out of math topics to teach on. Uh, but again, my best math help will be within my math help program. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.